What's up? My name is Prince Monkey D of the Fat Boys. And boy, do I have a crazy story to tell you. It was early 90s era. You know we all love that era. Crazy. We were in LA, Los Angeles, at a famous comedy club called The Laugh Factory. We're inside there, chilling, hanging out. And it's me and my boy Drew. We just hanging out at the table. Eddie's just walking around, drinks is flowing, everybody's laughing at the comedians, hecklers in the crowd going crazy. I look to my right and I see Al B. Shaw. Al B. Shaw was like a big R&B artist in, in, during that era. Sitting next to him, Bobby Brown. Me and Bob, mad cool, me and Al real cool. I walk over there, I'm like, Bob, what's poppin'? He's like, Mark, what up? I'm like, Al, what's poppin'? He's like, Mark, what up? <laughs> he was the, the suave bolo, he was the suave bolo back then. We hanging out, we having fun, and we all look to the right, and guess who's sitting at table, like four tables down? Eddie Murphy, king of comedy. He's sitting over there with like 10 bad bras, they beautiful. Eddie's like, yo, what y'all doing after the party? We going to my house, mansion, party, let's go. We like, fuck the comedy club, let's go right now. So we all get up and we on our way. Next thing you know, we at Eddie Murphy's house, right? Now, Eddie's house was legendary in the music business because of the door he had to walk into the property. You don't open the door, the door slid, it slides open. We never seen no crazy shit like that. We're inside Eddie Murphy's house. Everybody's yeah, yeah. fucked up, drunk, having a good time. Bad girls everywhere you look. Bartender behind the bar, serving crazy drinks, going bananas, making all types of sex on the beach. Niggas on the piano singing, bitches sitting on top of the piano. Everybody was in there fucking wildin', crazy. I see Arsenio Hall in the corner. I go, yo, Bobby, they go Arsenio Hall. Bobby Brown goes, where? He looks over to across the room. He sees Arsenio and his face changes. He just gets this grimace on his face. And he walks over there. When he gets there, he's like, yo. Arsenio goes, Bobby, stop. I'm like, Bobby, stop what? All of a sudden, Bobby punches him in the chest. Yo, he starts beating Arsenio Hall in the chest repeatedly. He's like, Bobby, stop with that finger. Like, stop, Bobby. Like, <laughs> Arsenio, wild boy. Bobby, stop. When I get him off him, I'm like, yo, what happened? Yo, stop, man, what are you doing? I had to pull him off of him. Why'd you do that, Bobby? He's like, because I wanted to. I'm like, you wanted to? What the hell? Man, come on, man, let's go holler some girls, man. So we go, and we see Al B. Shaw walking up the steps. So we sneak behind him, we're like, Al, where you going? He goes, screw this, I'm looking for Eddie. So we get upstairs, second floor, and it's another big room. Come to find out, the girls downstairs was the B team. Upstairs is the A team. 18 girls, oh my God. I'm talking like beautiful lips, eyes, sexy skin, like just jewels glistening. Like every girl looked like Selma Hayek up there. We hear music coming out of another room. Walk into the room. Eddie Murphy is sitting in this room on a couch with his legs crossed and a guitar. Across the room is a wall of speakers. Music is blasting out the speakers. And Eddie's just drumming the guitar, singing into the mic. Oh, 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 it must be like a new song that he had coming out on a new album or something. Next thing you know, Bobby Brown, I'll be sure, and all of them are singing together. Tripping. I'm like, what the fuck is going on in here? Oh, yeah. oh, all right. oh. After maybe 15, 20 minutes, I had to get the hell out of there, so I left. I get downstairs, and Eddie had ordered these car services to take anybody home if he wanted to go home. As I'm walking out, I see this girl. She's walking out too, and she's like, yeah, this party's too much for me. Guys trying to smash in here and all of that. And we walk out. So I start kicking it to her. She tells me where she's going. We end up taking the same car. We're in the car, we're kicking it, whatever. So I ask her what's her name. She's like, my name is Heather. I'm like, Heather? I'm like, word? Oh, that's dope. All right, she's real pretty. So we back there and I'm getting my, my Rico Suave on her and all that. So we holding hands and, you know, a little kissing. You know, nothing, nothing too major. I was just tired. I was like, give me your number. We exchange numbers and I'll give you a holler, whatever. She dropped me off at my hotel first. I remember she pulled off. 
couple of days later, I find out that the girl in the back seat with me was this icon from the 1980s called Heather Locklear. So if I just would have brought her upstairs, I could have smashed that. And she was, I think she was with it, honestly. I could have smashed Heather Locklear. Boy, Eddie knew I thought, he still know I thought, I don't know if he still know I thought a party, but back then he damn sure did, boy. <laughs> That's one of my crazy party stories that I had, so hope you enjoyed it. Peace.